Hi there everyone, my name is Darren Simpson. I write a slightly darker fiction for older children and teens and so far I've written these books. Scavengers, The Memory Thieves and Very Hot Off The Press, Furthermore. And today I'm here to talk to you about scavengers and in honour of World Book Day I'm going to give a reading from this book and set you a fun writing challenge based on the reading, okay? So let's tell you what the book's about. It's called Scavengers, and essentially it's about this boy here called Landfill, who's a wild, feral boy who's grown up with wild animals behind the walls of this industrial wasteland called Hinterland. And Landfill is kept safe there by a guardian called Babagoo. And Babagoo keeps Landfill safe from the outsiders who live beyond this wall, who live outside okay who are very dangerous they have a disease called the hunger and they're rotting inside and if they got hold of landfill they'd do terrible things and in the reading i'm about to give you now uh, landfill has been taken for the first time outside hinterland by babagoo and babagoo is taking him to the spit pit which is a massive dump where babagoo goes to sort of catch gulls for food and get supplies to look after hinterland okay and it's a very exciting day for landfill because it's his first time outside hinterland and um Unfortunately, though, he's got, there are many rules that Landfill has to follow, and one of the rules that Landfill has to follow in the spit pit is not to go high enough to be seen by outsiders. But unfortunately, uh, curio curiosity has got the better of Landfill, and in this chapter, in this reading, we're going to see what happens when Landfill climbs to the top of a mountain of rubbish to see, what's, uh, see what he can see. Landfill could soon see the hill that lifted Hinterland to that endless plateau of purples and browns. He spent a moment trying to comprehend what he saw, then twisted suddenly into the bank, pushing his body against its slope and gripping so hard that it hurt. His eyes were clenched shut and it took a while for the dizziness to pass. When he opened his eyes again, he looked up and gasped. His own slope summit was just above his head. After checking the bend below, Landfill closed his eyes and took some deep breaths. Making his decision, he opened his eyes and moved cautiously upwards. While approaching the summit, he adjusted the hood of his dross cape. Then, as gradually as he could, he raised his head until his nose was just above the crest. His eyes widened, his mouth hung open and his knuckles turned white. After that, only his golden hair moved flicked by a rancid breeze that sent rappers whistling past his head. He struggled to take it all in. The outsiders made small by vast distance, the motley hues of the landscape and faraway buildings, the rolling, grinding machines with their huge, spiked wheels. Landfill! A gruff but restrained call from below. Landfill twisted his neck and puffed with relief to see that Babagoo hadn't turned the ravine's bend. But it wouldn't be long before he did. Doing his best to ignore the junk that scraped his skin, Landfill whirled around and scrabbled down the slope. His eye caught a dull flash to the right. When he recognised it as a metal tray, he leapt sideways onto it and, speeding down the hill, released a frightened cry that was almost a giddy laugh. With his cape flapping behind him, he leaned back and held tight and caught sight of Babagoo as the tray soared over the edge where the bluff suddenly steepened. A howl escaped Landfill's throat just before he crashed into a heap of broken chairs. The tray protected him from spikes of rotten wood, but made a metallic clatter that had Babagoo searching the slopes with eyes full of terror and rage. What? he began. What? Landfill rolled and cried out when flames of agony exploded in his wrist and shot up his arm. Babagoo was stomping towards him, glaring back and forth between the boy and the slope from which he'd come. How high did you go? He spat the words through gritted teeth. How high did you go? Landfill could barely hear him over the roaring in his ears. The pain from his wrist seemed to spread to his stomach and he could taste bile rising beneath his tongue. Babagoo raised his voice. His cheeks bristled and writhed with a life of their own. How high did you to the top? Babagoo stopped abruptly. His arms shot out, dirty fingers pinching frantically at the air. We have to move. Landfill cradled his arm and licked his wrist and bleated in agony when Babagoo hauled him to his feet. Move or die, quaked Babagoo. You went too high. They'll have seen you. They'll be coming. Landfill did his best to stay upright while the scavenger dragged him along. They were soon scrambling through a network of grooves in the rubbish, 
a winding labyrinth with close, reeking walls lined with shrieking gulls. Babagoo stopped and cursed. His foot had sunk into some loose rubbish, and something was making him wince in pain. Landfill clutched the scavenger's arm. What is it? Babagoo was trying to pull his leg up with both hands. Stuck! It's stuck! Landfill crouched and reached for Babagoo's ankle, but was sent reeling by a violent shove. Don't meddle with it, gasped Babagoo. Something heavy on my foot. You'll make things worse. Been in this fix before. Landfill's pupils darted in every direction, frantically checking crests and corners for any sign of pursuers. What did you do? Leverage. Used a curtain rail to lift the weight away. The scavenger's head swivelled back and forth. But there's nothing like that here. You'll need to find something. Anything long and strong. We can use that crate over there as a fulcrum. Landfill's hand rose to his mouth. I can't leave you. The outsiders. Exactly. They'll have us if you keep pottering. So get searching. Go, boy, go. While Babagoo wrestled with his bags, Landfill turned away and, doing his best to ignore the pain from his wrist and the cuts on his feet, ran as quickly as he could. He scanned the ground and walls as he moved, but after turning several corners, still hadn't found anything to use. He glanced over his shoulder and, realising he wasn't sure of the way back to Babagoo, wheeled on himself and dropped to all fours. He tried to retrace his route, but the rubbish surrounding him looked unnervingly unfamiliar. He couldn't help calling out for Babagoo, but his voice was snatched by the breeze and lost to the gulls. He got back to his feet and tried moving more carefully through the maze, scrutinising the waste for anything he'd seen before. Upon approaching a bend, he stopped. Something had appeared at the bottom of the corner ahead. It was a thick black boot, attached to a leg covered in coarse, flapping trousers. Landfill's head twitched to and fro in search of somewhere to hide. There was nothing. He was surrounded by tight looming walls, and the corridor of crud extended far behind him, with the cover of its nearest bend painfully beyond reach. Taking the blade from his pocket, Landfill crouched into a pouncing stance and watched the outsider step into view. Okay, so Landfill's in a bit of a fix there. Uh, He's basically been cornered by an outsider. Okay, and your writing challenge now is to uh, put yourself into Landfill's shoes. Well, actually, he doesn't wear shoes. He runs around in bare feet. But put yourself in his position and flee from this outsider. I want you to write an exciting chase scene where Landfill's going to run through the rubbish and maybe dodge this outsider, find somewhere to hide. Basically, that's an exciting chase scene. That's what you're going for, okay? And I've got some tips to help you get this scene down, okay? So firstly... um, you have lots of choices to make. You can write this in any perspective you want. You can write it in first person perspective or second or third. That's up to you. And you can also write it in whichever tense you want. I mean, that was obviously in the past tense, but you can write it in the present tense to make it very immediate. Or you can write it in the past tense, whatever works for you. OK, so think about the perspective and the tense to use for your story. What's going to make it most exciting, do you think? Secondly, is get inspired with images, okay? When I uh, wrote this book, you know, there was lots of rubbish and stuff there, this big dump that that the story is set in, and that was inspired by real landfill sites where people live in real life, okay? If you do some Googling of people living on landfill, especially in developing countries like Indonesia and uh, North Africa, um, uh, you'll find um, lots of images of children and families living on massive dumps, living on mountains of rubbish, uh, trying to survive by scavenging. So look at these images. Think about the, the the surroundings there, the scenery, the waste, the things that get thrown away, all the junk, and use that to inspire you to sort of like create the scene for this chase scene, okay? Uh, next thing, and this is something I use for writing most of my scenes, think about feelings and senses, okay? How is Landfill going to feel? How will, will his body react? Is his heart beating fast? Is he sweating? Is he hurting? Is he aching? Is he scared? And think about the senses, think about what he can smell, what he can see, what he can feel, okay? So and it, try and put those in your story and it puts the reader into the moment even more. Uh, nextly, what's going to happen to Landfill when you write this story? Is he just going to run away and try and outrun this uh, outsider? Or perhaps he might outsmart the outsider somehow. Perhaps he might find some rubbish to hide in. Basically, readers like to see baddies getting tricked and outsmarted by goodies, don't they? Uh, So think about that. Think how you can give the reader some satisfaction of watching Landfill maybe outsmart this this scary person who's chasing him, okay? 
And um, the last thing is, how is it going to end, okay? Uh, how's Lan is Lanfield going to get away? And what's going to happen to him? How's he going to feel? And maybe you can make the ending a bit open. Try and make the ending uh, push the reader into wanting to know what's going to happen next. Leave the reader maybe hungry for more with the way your story ends. That's often a good thing to do. Okay, so those are my tips. I hope, hope you have lots of fun writing this scene for Landfill, this chase scene. And uh, please feel free to send any work you do to me. I'll be really, really curious to uh, read it. And uh, yeah, have fun, because that's what it's really about. Just have fun, okay? Have fun writing. Just explore your creativity. Have a good time. That's what this is really about. And uh, yeah, I wish you all a very good World Book Day and World Book Week. And we'll see you around. Okay, bye.